guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about help. I am overwhelmed by my medical billing and coding program, Should I Quit? If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so I got a comment that I think can resonate with a lot of you who may be going through this. And I'm gonna read the comment and we're gonna get into it. So here we go. The comment reads, I am in the AAPC program and it is very challenging. The interactive lectures are very, very long. The self-paced program is only six months. I will get an extension if possible. I will have to get an extension if possible. I am very overwhelmed with the amount of information and starting to feel like this isn't for me. I've struggled with a lot of jobs in the past and I'm not the fastest learner. The more I get into this, I'm really starting to wonder if this is for me. It is very hard and challenging. I have a full-time job and when I'm not working, most of my time is spent on this course. I came to this video for motivation to not give up. Thank you so much, Blue, for all that you do. And the video was, don't quit before you get started in medical coding school. Sometimes people will have analysis paralysis <laughs> before getting into even medical coding school. And so they'll write me and say, is this for me? And you know, they go on with you know what's going on with their lives. But the thing is, guys, it is a lot that you have to learn when it comes to medical billing and coding. There are, it's not just learning about anatomy and medical terminology, which are supremely important, and pathophysiology and pharma, but it's also learning the ICD-10 CM manual, the hicks pix level two manual, the CPT, man CPT manual, and if you're learning that inpatient coding side, the ICD-10 PCS manual. So it's up to four manuals sometimes for people to learn medical billing and coding. And with that said, we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. That's my saying. <laughs> I've said that from the beginning of my channel because of the simple fact that it is true. We have to be able to read and comprehend what's going on. But before you let that overwhelm you and before you think, I'm just going to quit because it's just, it's not for me. This is a little bit of adversity that you're coming up against. It's a, it's a little bit hard, right? Or it is hard for you, right? And you say, Blue, this is too difficult. I can't do this. I can't do this. If you keep telling yourself that you can't, then you can't. When you tell yourself, I'm still learning and I'm going to give myself the grace and patience that I need in order to get through this. Because guys, you can be your own cheerleader if you want to be, right? You don't have to you know, wait on other people's approval or wait on other people to encourage you because they're not going to. Other people are going to be more concerned about themselves more than they are going to be about you. So this is why I say you have to be your own advocate. You have to be your own cheerleader. You have to be your own, hey, I got to do this and your own self motivator. And you can do this. Um, this. This part of the learning process where you're learning medical terminology and anatomy and all the good stuff, it's going to take some discipline and it's going to take some time, but you have to get organized. And the more organized that you are, the more successful that you'll be in trying to trying to learn this. Now, you, if you say, well, Blue, I work a full 40 hour week job. So do I. And so do a lot of other people that have gone through this similar thing and been able to sit and pass for an examination um, for coding. And then they're off and running in their new career. You will make time for the things that you want. Now, if this field found you. Because I'm all about, I'm not going to sell you all the field. I've never been that way. I will tell you my experience. I will give you my advice, but I will not sell the field. Because I do not believe that there's everybody that gets into it should be into it. Because some people are going into it solely for the money. They want the money and that's what they want. Well, guys, there's more to it than the money. I mean, the money is great. Yes. You know, and we never talk about money in specifics on my channel because every place is different. But because of the simple fact that you only want to be driven by money, when you are like that and you look for a career like that, that leads to misery. And that's not just with medical coding, that's with any field, okay? So if you are into this field because it's drawing you to it, I have said it before, medical coding finds people. <laughs> and if it found you, if, if your circumstances are that this field found you and you are in this program and you're feeling frustrated with it, stick with it. My advice is don't quit. Don't quit when it's so early on in the game, 
when it's so early on in the program and you may feel overwhelmed and the people that feel overwhelmed are the most disorganized people let's be honest because if you can't maintain a schedule you're going to feel like all of your time is going towards the school and going towards learning when you can easily work in ways to give yourselves breaks in between um, I have recommended before I have the, the study schedule out for 20 hours per week and I did it in three different templates and one of the templates is that you're studying for six days a week. One is that you're studying for five days a week and one is that you're studying for four days a week. And so with these things, it's broken down by manageable times. 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at lunchtime, 30 minutes in the afternoon on the drive home, um, and then one hour and one hour. That's three and a half hours in one day that you've studied, all right? And then you do that over the course of a week, that's 17 and a half hours in five days. And then you just have two and a half hours on Saturday or Sunday to make 20 hours done in one week. It's doable guys it is doable and you're still having time um, for your family for yourself for your pets for whoever it doesn't have to take over your whole life guys it really doesn't and if your classes are six hours during the week that's part of your study time guys you just have to incorporate the other 14 hours <laughs> in order to make your um, 20 hours in one week but it again it is possible you know to get anything good in life you have to work for it and you have to try hard at it and it's going to knock you down it's going to make you question things but if you run every single time you're always going to be running you're always going to be running it doesn't matter what it is and the harder you have to work for a career the harder you have to work for what you want the greater the reward right so instead of thinking immediately i'm not a fast learner I think this isn't for me. I should just give this up. If you did that, guys, if you did that, if you just gave it up that easily, because it's so easy for you to run from adversity, right? If you gave it up that easy, there's going to be that subconscious thing in your mind that's going to be reminding you, you have an uncompleted task that you still haven't done. I know because I get emails from people who say, well, Blue, I was um, wanting to learn medical billing and coding in um, 2000 and then I just gave it up because I, I let everything else get in my way. I tried to learn again in 2005. I, I let things get in my way again. But now I want to sit down and get into it because I really want to do it this time. That's almost 23 years of thinking about the same thing in the back of your mind that's uncompleted. Uncompleted. <laughs> So before you put yourself through that, see the task through. Doesn't matter how much you, if you have to kick and scream, if you have to cuss some of the way, you need to finish the task. And you can work it into your schedule where you're giving yourselves breaks in between, okay? So that way you don't get overwhelmed. And as far as learning medical terminology, you're going to learn your prefixes, your suffixes, and your root words. Once you learn those, and there's, it's a core of them that you have to learn, right? And it's out there, guys. I've, I've left a link so many times in the description boxes. Again, it's there. <laughs> uh, if it's on this one, it's going to be in one of the ones that I'm talking about, medical terminology. All you have to do is just go through YouTube and, and look through my videos and find them. But learn the prefixes, your suffixes, and your root words, and you're going to continually practice with those. So that way you can build the terms instead of trying to learn whole terms you could just piece words together you know and so that's a good way to learn medical terminology and when it comes to practicing the coding the workbooks that i recommend are again are in the description box below and so you can use those to augment your studies like with aapc and that you know you feel like they're just you're not learning anything what are you doing outside of of listening to the lectures to try to make yourself more engaged. Are you watching videos on YouTube about HIPAA? There's a ton of videos on YouTube about HIPAA. All you have to do is just type in HIPAA. Type in O-I-G. O -N -O -G. O -N -G. <laughs> o -I -G. You can type in any subject you want 
and you'll see a ton of videos pop up on YouTube. It's very easy. And no, I'm not going to leave the links, guys. I'm not doing it. Uh, because it's part of your development as a coder is to learn to do your research. And a lot of people will ask me, what is a specific link? You can look at Google, guys. It's very easy. All right. And that's the thing, guys. This In this industry, no one's going to hold your hand. And people have different ideas and different attitudes about helping others. I do help others a lot. <laughs> and because of that, you know, I want you all to learn from the things that I'm trying to show you. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, I can't help you guys, right? Because of the simple fact that when you are wanting people to, to just hand feed you all this stuff, it's not going to do you any favors in the real world when you're out there and you're actually having to work with people. And there's going to be veteran coders that, that are going to put you through your paces. And they're going to say, well, no one taught me, so I'm not going to teach you. I don't believe in that thought process. I believe in helping others. But I also believe, and the old expression is, uh, if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Or if you give a man a fish, you feed him only for a day. Let me say it again. <laughs> if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. It's the same thing, guys. Okay? So, uh, I want you guys to learn to fish. <laughs> uh, you know, just the saying, but, you know, learn to fish. So that way you can help yourself. Learn to organize your schedule so that you don't feel those overwhelming feelings and that you feel like you're going to run. Because if it's so easy for you to run right now, I hate to see the time when you're going to go and you're going to start studying for your exam. And then I hate to see the time when you start going out there looking for your first job and you're getting all those no's. There's a lot of people that are going to tell you no in the beginning as a brand new medical coder. doesn't matter if you have a CPC with no A. Um, if you have no experience, because there's a way to get your CPC without the A, right? And when you do, you still have no experience. So if you have no experience, how are you supposed to get a job if no one will hire you? It, again, it goes back to the advice that I've given before, which is you have to be persistent and you have to still apply. And a lot of people get fixated on only wanting to apply for entry level positions, which is uh, like a doom for uh, new medical coders because once one person, one employer puts up, this is an entry level job, there's gonna be thousands of people applying because they were looking for those entry level words rather than just getting out there and still applying anyway for medical coding positions, even though they're requiring or asking for three to five years of experience. You're still a medical coder. Anybody in that area that is happy as a medical coder who has experience is gonna stay where they are. And so that employer is going to have to hire who's ever applying, right? And that could be you, you know, if you go out there and you start applying, okay? And again, it's the same thing for when you're in school. You have to stick with it because there's going to be times when you're going to be confused. You're going to ask the teacher for help. The teacher's not going to be so nice to you. And, or maybe they're going to explain it in a way that doesn't make sense to you. So then you need to seek out a mentor or seek out a tutor. Now, a tutor you'll have to pay for. A mentor is free, but a tutor you'll have to pay for. And sometimes it's worth it to put out a few bucks so that you can understand um, what the what's going on with uh, the coding and what's going on with this particular subject or that particular subject. Because sometimes that's what happens. I mean, people get into that hamster wheel of not wanting to ask for help. And that's, that's again, part of being a good student is you have to talk to the instructor if it doesn't work with that instructor, then you you need to find other ways of learning. Whether it, again, whether it is going through a mentor or going through a tutor, you know, somebody that can help guide you along the way, you know, is going to be your best bet. So, um, I I always tell people if you're going to do anything, don't quit. I mean, you may as well see it through because again, subconsciously, it's going to bother you the whole time that you don't complete it. Right? If you don't complete the task, it's going to bother you until you complete the task. And I, I would not want something that heavy on my heart to be that way, to be thinking about all the time, you know. And when you look at having a career that's worthwhile, you know, people can have jobs all the time. And jobs being, I go here to collect a check and go home. 
Um, this is where I make my money and, and I go home. There's not, not everybody gets that, that warm, fuzzy feeling when they go to work and where they don't feel like they're working, right? I get that feeling when I go to work that I don't, I'm not working. This is, this is fun for me because I love what I do. And you know, that's, that's a passion for me. And for me, when I think about that, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm incredibly lucky to have that feeling where I don't, I don't have to work. This is not work to me. This is, this is what I do. And not everybody gets that. Some people insist on that they'll be happy once they retire. But you know, what happens when you retire is that, you know, do you want to go through all this again? Do you want to start learning? And some people do. Some people say, well, I gave my career to all this and now I'm going to do something for me. And this is going to be this medical billing and coding. And that's what they get into. And they, they get into it. They fall in love with it. They stay focused on it. And they don't listen to the naysayers. They don't listen to the other people that are out there trying to talk as if they know things. When I look at some of these comments, sometimes I, I see the things that they're saying that the people are saying. I'm like, they, they're they not even coders that are saying these things to these people. They're trying to be coders. So don't listen to people who are not on your same path, right? Don't listen to people that are not on your same path, even though they may think they know everything. They don't. Unless they are a medical coder themselves, <laughs> you're, you're listening to false advice, right? And, you know, so people may be, their heart may be in the right place, but at the same time, when you think about it, um, your career, your life, your journey is yours and yours alone. No one else is responsible for your happiness. No one else is responsible for whether or not you get it or not. Only you are. And you have to take responsibility for that. And once you start taking responsibility for that, then things can change. You'll see things start to change. You'll see yourself start to develop as a more stronger personality, a stronger coder, you know, somebody who's a really good student. And that's where it all starts because it's not just in while you're in the school. It's also when you get out into the real world, you still have to continue to be a good student and you can't fall into those feelings of, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed all the time. Because you're going to be overwhelmed when you get out in the real world. But it's about how you manage those feelings and how you manage to think about and plan and organize your thoughts. Planning and organizing your thoughts when it comes to learning is actually easier than you think. You start off with a piece of paper. You start listing all the things. You make two columns, right? One column is things that you do know, that you do understand. And then the other column is the things that you don't understand, the things that confuse you, whether it's medical terminology, evaluation and management coding, any of those things, uh, maybe some of the specialties, cardio, ortho, neuro, any of those, you start making a list of all the things that you don't know. Then you can see what you know and what you don't know. Then you can start checking off those things by concentrating on that I don't know list, looking to see how can I find out more about this subject how can I work on getting myself better with this subject? And then you move that over to the things that you do know once you feel like you have a good understanding of it. But again, guys, no one's going to hold your hand through this process. And no one will tell you, oh, this is how you've got to do it. I've tried. <laughs> I've tried to do that. And I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it, it, it registers sometimes, guys. But I want you all to understand that when you're in school, these feelings are normal. They are going to happen, but it is not a reason or an excuse for you to give up your journey and, and all the things that you've put into this. Because I certainly would hate to have wasted thousands of dollars trying to learn something just to give it up when it gets a little bit hard. Sometimes you have to figure out ways of coming up with a different approach to your learning. If a workbook is not working for you, then you need to try videos. Then you need to try pictures, something that will register with your memory and register in your mind. So that way it can be easier for you to learn. And don't just only pick one way of learning, pick multiple ways of learning so that your brain, you'll start to notice how your brain starts catching on and what's more comfortable for you. And also this, <laughs> Not everything in this industry is exciting, okay? The guidelines are very confusing the way they're written. And yes, they're not written in the most um, <laughs> colloquial manner. 
but it doesn't mean that you have to dismiss them because they are very important. So it takes time to learn and understand them, but it's going to take you just reading through them, even though you don't understand what it's saying, read through it until you do start to get it when you're in the real world. When you're in the real world, you will start to understand what those things mean. Then it's going to be a lot easier for you. But if you're not working on that right now, guys, that's where you got to start. Either listening to the guidelines, reading the guidelines, something, okay? But do not give up. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your plan. Don't give up on your idea. And don't let anybody else make you feel like you're stupid for doing it. Because they don't know. And sometimes they would never, ever be able to do something like this. There's a lot of people that try to discourage adults from getting into something that's going to better their life because they feel a little bit of jealousy. It happens, guys. Even the people that are the closest to us can do this to us, right? Whether it is a loved one or even a parent. I, I heard that when I was in school. Um, there were some ladies that would say, oh, my mom said that she doesn't think that I could do that. I'm thinking, that's so horrible to hear. Or my old man, like their husband, my old man says that he doesn't think that I'm smart enough. Why would you discourage people like that? But there's people that do do that, guys. And, and for whatever reason, that's their problem, not yours. You stay on your path. You decided to do this. You want to do this for whatever reason. You keep that in mind. Whether it is that you are going to finally see something through for yourself. You're doing it for a better life for yourself or your kids or your family. That's what you need to keep in your mind when you start to feel those feelings of I think I want to give this up don't you dare give it up okay you keep going even if you have to cuss out loud you keep on going because again no one's going to hold your hand through this whole process because when it scares you off it's going to scare you off and if you run off from it then that's I mean it, it probably wasn't for you anyway but if you are saying no I'm going to see this through I'm going to make sure that I don't quit and I'm going to keep going that's what you need to hold on to, why you're doing it for yourself or your family or whoever. That's you need to keep in your keep in your mind, because, again, that's what's going to propel you forward. And that's what's going to get you through those hard times, because, you know what? It is worth it in the end. It is worth it. The career that you get into is going to be worth it. And if you say, well, I got into a place and I don't like it. There's a ton of other places that are hiring. They're not the only place in town. I'm just saying. So, again. That's just my advice anyway, guys. Uh, I'm not here to sell the field, but I am here to tell you that if you're thinking of just a little bit of adversity and this is why you want to quit, I'm telling you, don't quit. Don't quit. See it through because you're already in it. You already spent your money or you signed on that dotted line. You're going to be responsible for that money. See it through. Don't let one little incident run you off from a life that could be so wonderful and so fulfilling don't run away from it just because you're scared or just because you feel overwhelmed an overwhelming feeling is just temporary it will go away once you keep head on with it and you see it through and that's just my advice anyway so with that said i'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up best of luck to you on your journey if this video helped you please like subscribe and share and i will see y'all next time bye